Hi everyone, OT Lifehacker here. Let's go over motivational interviewing. As I mentioned in my previous video of occupational therapy, OT, in mental health, I talked about how in motivational interviewing is something that may often be used. And in general, motivational interviewing is very um, important, a good tool to use for working with everyone or anyone. And even personally, I apply this to myself when um, interacting with my own loved ones and even my own self. Because the idea of motivational interviewing is to help evoke in yourself um, a sense of change. And having an external person, I mean someone else, there to help facilitate you in um, figuring out where you stand on your own, um, toward where you stand for your own issue, your own thing that you want to work on. Um, do you recognize it as something that needs to be worked on right now? Um, so let's get into it. So in a motivational interviewing with you being the person who is providing this um, guidance to the client, you want to use a collaborative, goal-oriented approach. Now this means your communication with the person is going to be um, not talking at them, not directing them in a specific direction, um, or at least not for the whole time. You'll be, you would want to help them, like I said, figure out themselves. So it's very client-centered. You wanna do less talking and have them do more talking so that they can figure out, get the um, gears turning on what their thoughts are in regards to um, something that is a potential concern. You wanna be very careful um, with the language used. Again, focus your language on the client's, um, uh, what you observe of the client. So you want to see how their body language is and pay attention to how you come across to them. Not per se to mirror them, but to show that you have understanding. Um, of what they're going through and it give, it helps build this report, um, this sense of trust that you're not trying to dominate over them. You're not trying to come across as someone who's stiff, who's very just like, um, when, you, when someone comes into the room, your first impression of them, if they are like this, let me back up, if they're very stiff and just like say they have pen and paper in hand and they're ready to take notes on you, that can come across as very scary and intimidating. So rather, when a person comes in or when you go see them, be come across as someone who's very present and willing to listen, ready to listen to the person who is there in front of you. And you're not placing judgment. Um, a key thing in motivational interviewing is acceptance. You express appropriate empathy, um, meaning you're not over, um, say for example, overindulging in a certain behavior, you're expressing appropriate empathy. And um, like I said, let the client be their own expert on their life. So keys, this is client-centered. This is about acceptance, accepting the person where they're at, compassion for them, um, helping them to explore their own reasons for change. So again, you are there as if you're a sound barrier and, and facilitator in helping them see their own thoughts. So say for example, um, they're, they're telling you something, it's a long story, you wanna show that you're listening, you use active, 
listening skills, reflective listening skills. Um, reflective would be something along the lines of you not only just restate what they're saying, but you show that you're understanding, you're trying to understand by giving your own sort of interpretation of what they're saying and validating, um, validating that they're being heard. And you can summarize uh, towards the end or even as they go, summarize what they're saying so that they can help process what they're saying themselves. And you know, when you're asking them, is this what you mean? You're helping to give them a way of thinking about what they're saying. Because in your own heads, you may be thinking, um, okay, I, I completely understand what I'm doing here, what I'm saying, what my thoughts are. I know what I'm thinking. I know what's good for me. I know this and that. But then when you bounce it out onto someone else and that person helps not tell you what you're thinking, what is right or wrong, but they tell you, okay, so it sounds like you're saying this. Um, how does that make you feel? Or like facilitate more than what is just your own thoughts that are playing over and over. And so that can be very helpful um, in thinking about your own thoughts in different ways. And even just the thought of hearing yourself say it sounds really different from in your head. And summarizing, like I said, summarizing reasons for change. Um, after you summarize what is said, you also look at, okay, what's the next step? You help guide them towards, well, where do you want to head with this? What do you imagine yourself doing? What would you want to do five years from now, two weeks from now? What do you want to do with this? And then ask open-ended questions. So notice that my questions were, were not, so you think, um, I mean, questions weren't something like, do you think you would benefit from doing this? Do you do this often? It's more something of keeping it open-ended. Um, keeping the questions very open-ended so that they can fill out the question, fill, answer it as they feel fit. Now, so, like I said, summarize. Key points are, this is a partnership. You are helping to guide them. So it is client-centered. You let them do most of the talking. I mean, you let them be their own experts on their life. You accept, um, provide acceptance. You accept where they are at. Provide empathy and encouragement. Show complete compassion. Do not judge. Give positive, unconditional regard. Showing that you um, are in a safe, that the person is in a safe place to express themselves. All right, all right, and I think that's all for now. I will share more later. Bye guys.